at 36 Mulcaster Street in Barrie, and this is the building that was built, probably finished about 1888-1887, and was used to provide an administration center for the militia unit known as the Foresters. As time went by, uh, the unit in Owen Sound, called the Gray Regiment, was united with the Foresters, and from then on, we've been known as the Gray and Subco Foresters. This building was originally in place to serve the same purpose as the armories is today over in Queen's Park. Smaller unit, and it was servicing the people who were, well, the men, who were from age 18 to 60, and they were automatically part of the militia. That was just part of being a Canadian then. They don't have any idea what they're coming here to see. It's an eye-opener, and by the time they've spent maybe half an hour or so in here, uh, they usually say, thanks very much, I didn't realize all of this was available. The first thing we showed uh, a visitor is a record of all of the men who served during the First and Second World Wars and who gave up their lives. A kind of a sobering way to start a tour, but uh, um, locally, during, especially during the First World War, people worked very hard to recruit uh, people who would serve in our regiment. And uh, the same thing in the Second War, in Owen Sound, which was headquarters for the Gray Regiment, uh, they recruited through the uh, counties of Gray and Bruce, and of course, people don't really stay within boundaries, so it extended beyond that. And a lot of the natives volunteered and joined as well. There was no uh, draft that said they had to join. Then during the Second War, uh, when the two units were united, um, they went through training in Borden as infantry, and before they left to go overseas, they went back to Borden and retrained as armored. And when our guys got overseas and were doing further training in England, uh, they were told, but well, there's been some changes made. The whole unit is going to be used to reinforce other larger units. So we never fought under our own flag, but every one of the guys that went overseas fought. It's interesting that people have donated artifacts, uh, sometimes without knowing what the history might be behind them. So it's, uh, we kind of look forward to people bringing things in so that we can help fill out uh, some questions, answer some questions for them. In this display, it's a perfect example of trench warfare uh, men memorabilia that was uh, made by uh, members of the uh, special the forces that were in uh, the trenches during the First World War, and these items were made by hand and by gifted persons that had some time in between the shellings to create these items. And in this part of the museum, there are several picture displays. Uh, particularly this one here, for example, it depicts the um, the events on January t 1918, where a private 19-year-old private by the name of Thomas William Holmes was serving in the trenches. Trenches, and uh, he won the Victoria Cross, which is the highest medal that you're worn by a soldier for bravery, either um, receiving it. Um, um, at the time, uh, and he survives, and to receive it, or he would have been presented to it, possibly, most likely. Um, if, and, and in this particular case, he, Private Holmes was with the 4th Battalion Canadian Mounted Rifles, and on the 11th of January, 1918, while in the trenches, he, uh, his group of uh, comrades were under fire, heavy machine gun fire. At that time, it was it was devastating. The machine gun, when it was invented, was devastating. It was would kill hundreds of people in a very short period of time. And his advance to the German position was being held up. All the troops were being held up. 
he, on his own, took some bombs, ran forward to the German machine gun position, threw the bombs in, and killed several of the uh, occupants of the trench, and then came back to his own position again, took two bombs, ran back up, and threw the bombs into the position, and caused 19 of the Germans to surrender. And as a result of that, he received Canada's highest award. It's as a young officer, uh, where you're leading men, or even young soldiers that are wanting to be involved in in serving their country, by reading about individuals like uh, Private Holmes or others, uh, it inspires you to, to and gives you an example of how to. How, what a human being can actually do if it's necessary to protect their country and to do their duty and serve the country. When Mr. Tascona, who was in here, when he moved out, then we occupied the whole building. And first of all, Barry does not have a museum. And we are filling the void. And we're filling, I think, a very for the people of Barrie, especially the younger people who don't know the history of this particular county and city. When we occupied the building, we got funding from the Department of Heritage in Ottawa, which allowed us to have all these cases uh, built for this building. And uh, as you can see, it's pretty stupendous when you stop and think about it. I didn't know there was so much that a museum could hold. Every cabinet is just chuck full of memorabilia. And I go around with people and explain as well as I can the different articles that are in the cabinets. And they're quite thrilled. Mm -hmm.